at 11 with Phil Sanchez. Welcome back. President Biden highlighting new steps to address gun violence here in the United States. Specifically, he's targeting ghost guns. So joining us tonight for tonight's unfiltered conversation is Guy Relford, uh, constitutional rights attorney. Guy, good to see you. Thank you for joining us. Always good to see you. Thank you for having me. Before we get to your opinion on this, what are ghost guns? Well, the, as the term has developed, what it really means is firearms that um, aren't serialized. In other words, they haven't come from a manufacturer with a serial number already on them. And for that reason, we, the government or, or gun rights um, or rather uh, gun control uh, proponents have labeled them ghost guns because the, they can't be traced back to a particular manufacturer. Are they currently regulated, and if so, how? Well, what the, the way the current regulations work is that it's legal for someone to make their own firearm at home uh, for private use only. And that's been legal pretty much forever. Um, and if I'm just going to build a gun from parts myself, and that's for my use only, and I never transfer it, um, that's legal, and I don't have to serialize that. Um, what this proposed regulation does is it says, well, if someone manufactures parts that can potentially be used to assemble a firearm, the government's now going to require the serialization of at least some of those principal parts that go into the private uh, manufacturer of firearms. So what are your thoughts on that, specifically the, the serial numbers on the parts and also the background check aspect. Sure. Well, I mean, the primary issue is, look, no one, even, you know, pro Second Amendment advocates like myself wants to see untraceable firearms in the hands of criminals. Uh, the question always becomes, though, is any particular government regulation really designed to keep guns out of the hands of criminals or is it going to be an undue burden on private citizens and i think that's going to be the analysis um, going into this for instance right now the way that the rule is written and again we just today saw um, a, a public announcement from the white house on this final rule from the atf right. we haven't seen the final rule itself so we'll have to see how, how that rule really reads but the, the question really becomes for instance um, it, it, if multiple parts going into one firearm all are going to be separately ser serialized, and if I buy any one of those components to assemble to make a firearm, do I now have to go through multiple background checks to assemble one firearm? Um, it, does that make any sense, especially where um, that's going to increase uh, the burden on gun sellers and on gun buyers? So there's, there's a lot of um, devil in the detail that we're going to have to get into on this. Again, the question always becomes, is it really designed to affect criminals uh, or is it really something that's just going to be a burden on, on law abiding citizens? That's where the analysis, I think, really has to come in. Where or why, I should say, do law abiding citizens, law abiding gun owners, why are they against these rules? Oh, I don't know. Um, you know, I can't speak universally uh, for, for gun owners. I can tell you that um, there are a couple of concerns. One is that, again, it just creates an undue burden without the need um, or excuse me, without the effect of really influencing uh, criminals. But the other is, was all of this enacted in a constitutionally uh, enabled way? In other words, um, here you have an executive agency in the form of ATF that's rewriting definitions. But a lot of those came from Congress originally. So we always want to uh, take a hard look to see whether the executive is acting within its constitutional authority or whether it's really usurping the authority of Congress and doing what um, uh, the Biden administration, for instance, hasn't been able to get done in Congress. That's something that someone who um, advocates for constitutional rights as, and as a constitutional attorney, that's something I'm always going to take a hard look at to say, you know, is the government doing this according to the rules laid out in the Constitution itself? And we haven't seen enough of that yet to make that decision. 
No, I really haven't because what, what, we, what we've seen is an announcement on what the final rule is going to be. We haven't seen that actual final rule, but I think there'll be a lot of discussion on that, and I anticipate there being litigation on it uh, because the government needs to abide by its own rules as defined in the Constitution. The executive enforces rules. It doesn't make rules, and here we have a deviation from that, and that always ought to be looked at um, with some suspicion uh, when you have an executive branch changing laws. That's not its function under the Constitution. When we finally do get that information, we hope you come back on with us. Guy Relford, always good to see you. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for taking some time. It's always a pleasure. Thanks for the opportunity.